It is now my pleasure to introduce today's guest speaker, Kaya Stevens. Kaya is an activist, she's a poet, she's an animal rescuer, a volunteer. And in case you couldn't guess by those varied areas of interest and action, she's a Sarah Lawrence alumna. A two-time Sarah Lawrence alumna, in fact. A native of Waverly, Alabama, Kaya's earned her MA in women's history and her MFA in poetry from Sarah Lawrence. And today, she combines those two passions as the founder and director of the Alabama Prison Arts Education Project at Auburn University, an organization that is dedicated to bringing educational opportunities to prisoners throughout Alabama. With its earliest roots in 2003, Today, the project serves 10 of Alabama's 15 major prisons through pre-college and college programs and has led to the first Bachelor of Science degree program for the Alabama prison system. A leader in criminal justice reform through education, Caius has worked with colleagues across the country to build the foundation for the National Alliance for Higher Education in Prison and has been involved in the development of a national organization to support artists who teach in correctional institutions. With colleagues from around the country, she met several times with members of the Obama administration at the White House to discuss the role of higher education in criminal justice reform. Today marks the second time this semester that Caius has spoken on campus. In February, she spoke as part of our year-long series of events exploring our inaugural theme, Democracy in Education. As someone whose work is so fundamental to democracy, so focused on creating equal opportunity through education, and so timely in our world today, one time on campus was just not enough for us. So please join me in welcoming Kai Stevens to the podium and back to Sarah Lawrence. Good afternoon. It is a real honor to be standing here with you today. Um, thank you, President Crystal Collins Judd, for inviting me back. To say that this place changed my life is a small understatement. Um, and so it's a blessing to be here. Um, the Women's History Program taught me that I could do more academically than I imagined possible. Um, and the Poetry Program basically put miracle grow on my eyes, right? So I, I, I see the world in ways that are magnified now, and, and that's a gift. So actually, 18 years ago, today-ish, um, I stood right here um, speaking to my peers as representative of the um, writing program. And I talked about gratitude, as something that's already been mentioned once today, and I just want to take two seconds for you wearing your black robes there in front of me to acknowledge your family and friends who are here who have helped you get here. So give them a clap. I grew up in an extremely small town in rural Alabama and was inundated with that whole thought process of just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And the more you get out in the world and the more you see the um, lack of access and the inherent inequity that is us, you understand that that logic is flawed. It's seriously flawed. How do you pull your boots up? if you don't have any. So please always acknowledge the people along your path who are helping you get to where you need to be. So I'm gonna start with a question. What does it mean to walk with intention and action through a world bound by compassionate sight? I have shoved too much in that sentence, so I'm gonna say it again. What does it mean to walk with intention and action through the world bound by compassionate sight. In 1987, my mother gave me a short story, The Man Who Planted Trees. Without hesitation, it is the most influential reading of my life. I read it now at least once a year. It is some kind of soul scripture for me. Um, and I have needed that, honestly, the past 17 years working and teaching in the Alabama prison system. But the book challenged me to see anew. 
I stepped into teaching poetry very shortly after sitting where you are sitting, thinking that I was the shizzle. Um, I found out very quickly that I was not the shizzle. Prison taught me that. It taught me about inequity. It taught me about access and how poverty and racism endure. I am grateful for that insight. So back to this story, the man who planted trees. It's about an ordinary man who saw potential in a vast desert. So he planted trees for a lifetime. And because he planted these trees, a forest grew. And people were amazed. People doubted him. But Elziard Bouffiard, the shepherd, this simple man, he did not doubt. He did not waver at all. He had a deep and unshakable knowing. So of course it is a story about environmental impact. It's about being a good steward to the land. But I'm really interested in the metaphor here. It is one of cultivating and growing any kind of change. It is a lifelong story of investment. It is having faith in something. It is enduring when people and systems minimally, minimally support or even try to derail a truth or an action. It has a certain selflessness, but it is also rooted in feeding the soul of the self. It is a steadfast action in compassion. It begins with the ability to see the present, but also to see beyond. It is the ground view right here where we are all sitting, but it is also the 20,000 foot view so that you can see beyond a desert and you can imagine possibility. So this is how you create change, to see today and to imagine five generations from now when none of us are going to be here and to act toward what you imagine can be. I tell my students all the time that once you truly learn to see with an open head and an open heart, you cannot unsee. With sight comes an extraordinary obligation. And maybe that is why there is such systemic fear in our culture, a societal induced blindness of things that are other. We judge people. And I'm not just talking about people who are impacted by the criminal justice system. I'm talking about everybody. Even comedy is a thinly veiled diminishment. It's based at making fun of someone or a group of people. How hard we are on each other. So this world puts opportunity in your path. There are lights along the way. But if the glimmer around the bend, if it seems hard to get to, if it seems stifled by trees or buildings or even ideas, your job is to look harder. Dream new ways to get to the light. Don't be complicit in the mundane. The mundane is a world and mind with blinders on. Try and find what you cannot see. Break things open and discover something that you don't know. Last week, the cyclical nature of being manifested itself when um, I got to spend a few days with Suzanne Gardner, who came down to Alabama to spend some time with our poets on the inside. And I know many of you in this audience know Suzanne. I do too. She was my professor. Long the advocate of radical sight and challenging students to conceive something greater than themselves, Suzanne planted some seeds in me. Seeds regenerate. They grow on in lives that are poems. All of this to say, you never know what seeds are going to sprout and when. So nurture your consciousness and be aware of yourself and the world and I'm gonna step into the formula of um, commencement speeches and share with you some words from Walt Whitman. He has some great wisdom to give to you. This is what you shall do. Love the earth and the sun and the animals. Despise riches. Give alms to everyone that asks. Stand up for the stupid and crazy. 
Devote your income and labor to others. Hate tyrants. Argue not concerning God. Have patience and indulgence toward the people. Take off your hat to nothing known or unknown, or to any man or number of men. Go freely with powerfully uneducated people. And the young, and with mothers of families, read these leaves in the open air every year of your life. Re-examine all you have been told in school, in church, and in any book. Dismiss whatever insults your soul. And your very flesh shall be a great poem and have the richest, richest fluency, not only in its words, but in the silent lines and lips and face and between the lashes of your eyes and in every motion and joint of your body. <sighs> Whitman was a visionary, wasn't he? Your very flesh will become a great poem the physical self as a vessel for truth-telling, for calling in the elders, for bringing in the voices and the history to make change, to be change. Poetry is change. It is of the people. And it is also Langston Hughes calling on Alabama. When I get to be a composer, I'm gonna write me some music about daybreak in Alabama, and I'm gonna put the prettiest songs in it, rising out of the ground like swamp mist and falling out of heaven like soft dew. I'm gonna put some tall, tall trees in it and the scent of pine needles and the smell of red clay after rain and long red necks and poppy-colored faces and big brown arms and field daisy eyes of black, and white, black, and white, black people. And I'm gonna put white hands, and brown hands, and yellow hands, and red clay earth hands in it, touching everybody with kind fingers, and touching each other natural as do in that dawn of music when I get to be a composer and write about daybreak in Alabama. So to find answers, you must look for the light of questions. You must vision a world you want and act. Ask the questions. I know you do, you're at Sarah Lawrence. Who deserves possibility? Who deserves potential? What desert gets the seeds? Does a single person's heart and soul hold more light and value and vision than another? And if so, why? We have entrenched systems that perpetuate a discriminatory process for planting, literally and figuratively. Who gets access to what? Systems are hard to change, and let's be honest, most of these systems are based in exploitation and profit-making, and they are going to be really difficult to dismantle. So this is my challenge to you. Build your own system your own standard by which to see and live and invest in the planet. To grow this way of being and doing, you have to nourish your sight. You have to look at everything. Do not inhabit intentional blindness just because you don't agree with something or someone. See your flaws. You have them, I promise. Know them. They can actually help you evolve. Don't be fooled into thinking because you are great and wonderful that everybody else thinks that you are great and wonderful. <laughs> this is a hard lesson to learn, right? <laughs> Don't believe that yours is the best system, right? Or the only system. That's part of our problem right now. Understand that when you get entrenched and shove people to the side, we're actually mimicking the oppressive systems that we're trying to dismantle. I promise I'm getting somewhere. <laughs> Many of you know exactly what you want to do from here. Some of you have no clue. Both of those options are fantastic. Um, because when you step wide into the world with eyes that can really see possibility for people, for justice, for the planet, for animals, whatever it is that you see, you are going to find avenues for your particular heart and your particular mind. In learning to see, though, don't step into the hierarchical structures that eat us up. 
greed. Don't succumb into power-sucking modes of being that oppress people. Please do not place your sight above anybody else's sight. The person who disagrees most vehemently with what I do with the Alabama Prison Arts and Education Project in Alabama has a reason they believe what they believe. It's out of personal experience, it's out of fear, it's out of systemic racism, it's out of believing everything that you hear on mainstream media, but their voice is important too. So as I hope that people listen to me in talking about what we're doing, then I have to listen to them and really listen on a soulful level. That is hard to do. It is easy to listen to your friends. They don't disagree with you. You can have intense discussions, but they don't challenge you in the same way as someone who rocks the core of your inner belief. You need to spend time with the people who rock the core of your inner belief. Um, and that involves listening and seeing, right? One of my mechanisms for doing that and conceptualing possibility is getting away from human beings. For me, it is the backcountry wilds of New Zealand and sitting up on top of mountains. Get somewhere quiet. Turn off your damn phone. <laughs> and see. See each rustle of grass on the edge of a sandy beach and the way that pines have grown in order to catch the wind rather than fight the wind. Get to the spot where a stream or a river starts and see that at the birthplace it's a trickle and it isn't a torrent. Watch the moon and the stars. Get to darkness so that you can understand light. And don't let fear get in the way of your heart. In this country, all across every corner, there are people investing in the world they want. Value that. Not everyone is going to like your world. Don't expect it. Just keep going. Act with intention, with a sight that is cultivated by compassion, a sight inspired by possibility. And in closing, and very, very sincerely, Please offer your hand out to the world. It will take work and time and money and energy and heart and head, and you will absolutely not regret it. Good luck.